Hello everyone, we will present results from an experiment here involving novel methods with the aim to prevent shoplifters from shoplifting. The first author, Gustav Frisk Arvidsson, could unfortunately not do the presentation here at SMC. In addition to Gustav, we are Martin Jungdahl Eriksson, a sound designer, Håkan Lidvo, a sound artist and composer, and the presenter Kjetil Falkenberg, who works at the Sound and Music Computing Group at KTH. In this talk, we will show some first results from a study on sonification in stores, where the main aim is to prevent people from shoplifting. There are other aims too, such as making the shopping experience better for customers and to make working conditions less stressful and safer for the employees. To discourage from theft, we suggest to play a subtle and pleasant audio alert when something expensive is being moved from the shelf. Ideally, the sonification should not attract attention from others than the store clerks and shoplifters. The sounds should absolutely not reduce the overall shopping experience. One motivation for this work is to reduce losses. Another is to suggest a different surveillance method from cameras that better respects personal integrity. And we wish the shopping experience to be safe, appealing and exciting for all. This is the summary of the experiment and the results which will be presented more in the following. We conducted an experiment using a VR simulated shop where subjects were assigned one of two different roles, those aware of a surveillance system and those unaware. The notification sounds were played during a visit to the store and we measured and analyzed how customers had movements responded with alerts. In this paper we discuss issues regarding sound design and particularly sounds with or without congruence with the shop environment. In a related ICAD paper we discuss alertness and noticeability in light of having subjects with or without this knowledge. And from the findings we propose a set of guidelines for design of alert sounds which we'll come back to later. Our research question is, will visitors to a virtual store have their attention drawn towards sound alerts being played depending on the type of sound? Or in other words, will visitors to a virtual reality store notice sound alerts at all? Will they be disturbed by them? Are there differences between different sound types? We consider the following types of visitors in a store. The first type is the shop employee who manages sales and customers and keeps watch of the premises. The second type are the shoplifters, who typically are divided into seven subgroups. Here we consider mainly the opportunists and the thrill seekers. The third type are the normal customers who are either buying or just browsing. As mentioned, we assigned the experiment participants one or two roles to have participants with or without knowledge of surveillance systems with notification sounds. In the virtual shop, participants were led along a path for 10 minutes. They wore an Oculus Quest head-mounted display and Audio-Technica M50X headphones. There were six shelves on the map, as you see, with virtual speakers that would play the sonification sounds. In addition, there was a background music track and a sonic ambience track playing from everywhere. The ambience was added for creating a realism, while the music track was added also to mask the notifications. Avatars walked around and acted like customers, browsing and picking up items. When an avatar came close to one of the six shelves with virtual speakers, a notification sound would play. Each of these shelves had its own sound. In total, during the 10 minutes, participants would hear 25 interactions triggered by the avatars. Here follows the sounds used in the experiment. These can also be found online, so please find the link in the paper. The background music was a generic beat-based track without vocals, and it sounded like this.
the ambient soundtrack consisted of sounds typically encountered in a store, although it was not generated by the avatar's movements and actions, but a recording. Then we had three congruent sounds, um, which all reminded of moving clothes from a hanger or a clothing rack. This is the first. Here's the second. The third. This was a cartoonification of a sound. Incongruent sounds. Here's the first one, a sweep, which was a filter sweep. Only a wind chimes. Move forward to the results. We can see in this first chart that the amount of head movements of participants uh, in relation to the sounds that were played. So first we could conclude that participants who did not know about the sound notification had much less head movements than the knowing participants. And this was particularly evident during the actual notification was played, which is shown in the first grouping in the chart. In the second grouping, we see that there is not much difference between the sound notifications. This tells us that you would notice our alerts only if you were aware of their existence. If unaware, you wouldn't be much bothered by them. In this chart, we see that what we call the hit rate of notifications, or how many of the played alerts that are identified through head movements towards the sound source. The comparisons are for congruent versus incongruent sounds, and we could observe that there is no much difference between having sounds that are expected in the environment, congruent, or sounds that are strange to the environment. We had expected the results to be different, and that the unknowing group would notice incongruent sounds more than the congruent sounds. In the next slide, we'll have a look at the different sounds. Here we see the hit rate for each of the six sounds. The two remarkable findings are that the chime sound is poorly noticed, although it is very distinct. The other is that the bird sound is the most noticed by the unknowing. However, none of the participants mentioned that this sound was particularly annoying or strange. In light of the findings, which are explained in more detail in the paper, we propose some guidelines for further studies within this area. We found that alerts can be congruent with and contextually fit the environment where they are played. They can be played at a relatively low volume. They can be short in length, around one second. They can be designed without much concern of attack sharpness. They can be used without much concern of growing sensitivity over time. And they can be incongruent if designed with care. However, we do not claim that these guidelines are general for any circumstance. The study has many limitations, which are not noted in the paper. In ongoing and future works, we study different sound designs, other types of virtual reality task modes, better specialization, and ultimately field experiments in real stores. In these, we intend to include to look at the loss reports and other relative, uh, relevant customer data. So, with this we say thanks and mention that this work is part of an ongoing research project funded by the Håkon Svensson Foundation and the Swedish Retail and Wholesale Council. So thanks for listening.